So basically now we have nothing to do other than networking, <laughs> uh, which is a very important part of the conference. You know, I always tell people that one reason to come to the conference is networking. Uh, the other reason to come to the conference is networking. And the third reason to come to the conference is networking. Because if you're only here to listen to the speaker, you can get the videos for free and you can sit in your pajamas and watch it at home, right? Why would you want to come to the conference? Come to the conference so you can meet other people, you can get the feel of the community, go back motivated, right? That's important. So we, I want to spend the next maybe at least 30 minutes kind of doing something to kickstart the networking and then hopefully it'll continue till about seven when we'll serve dinner. Uh, and also if people are interested, there is obviously a hackathon that you can go and participate uh, in the meantime. So uh, the plan right now is kind of getting you guys to uh, form little teams and trying to do some activities in the teams and uh, see how that helps you network. And hopefully that'll get you out of the comfort zone and speaking to other people. Is everyone with me? Or you prefer rather doing something else? You, you have to tell me because I only know about this. Uh, we could do flash talks, we could do lightning talks, uh, but I believe people have already had a lot of dosage of talks today. So, you know, maybe let's do some activity and we will see how that goes and then we will take it from there, all right? You gave away the frisbee, we could use the frisbee. No, he's got one more. That's my trick of getting a frisbee from him. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't need the frisbee. <laughs> uh, we'll form uh, groups, and one of the activities that we do is, you, uh, you know, we form groups of six to seven people. In the groups, you kind of create a structure. Uh, sorry, let me speak here. So we'll form groups of six to seven people and you'll form a human structure with six to seven people and then everybody else has to guess what that structure is. Right? It's actually really fun. We've done this in the past. People really enjoy it. So let's give it a try. So if people sitting at the tables, that's about six to seven people. Uh, maybe you can get some more people and then kind of form a small team and if you're all from the same company, then I would encourage you to go to a different table because you already probably know people from your company. Uh, it's an opportunity to meet people from other companies. Uh, so why don't we take a quick five minute, you guys kind of self-organize, form teams of six to seven people, decide a structure within your group, what you want to build, and then we'll come up here and you'll form a structure. Everybody else will have to guess that. All right? So I'm going to kickstart my timer for five minutes. I want you to self-organize and form something in five minutes. Group to come up with the idea. Anyone with, I would select who will go first. I have the powers. One quick suggestion, you might want to try something before you come on stage and try to do it all of a sudden on the stage. So I see one group over there already trying out things. It's supposed to be very creative, so. You need a monitor? <laughs> Three seconds to go. You guys done? Awesome. Done. Vacancy. <laughs> Which group is ready? I see those guys are very enthusiastic. So come over. Hang on, guys.
you, we'll get that group over here. Hopefully, you guys are not from the same company. That's awesome. All right, now your job is to guess what they are doing. Take a guess, guys. the shape <laughs> so people can guess how much time all right why don't you guys say what it was it's a dollar sign oh awesome <laughs> that was good now that you know it was dollar sign can you guess <laughs> no still no way off all right thank you guys who's the next group All right, whoever is ready, come over quickly. That's okay. This is only first round. We are warming up. <laughs> All right, who's next? Oh, we can do two structures at the same time. <laughs> no, no, let's, let's get these guys and then we'll come over. <laughs> Good one. That was not a structure, but I'll give it to you guys. <laughs>
There were four horses, right? <laughs> what was the right answer, by the way? What was the right answer? Chariot. He's the Krishna behind who and someone else is riding. Guys, <laughs> give us a clue. <laughs> He's also thinking. <laughs> you have to keep your hands up till you don't give a clue. <laughs> can line up there so then you can get right this is looking like a real structure now in a picture, man. <laughs> <laughs> Once again. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys tell someone over there before you came? <laughs> that was good. Once more. <laughs> that word is banned at the conference. <laughs> no, correct. Related to computers. What do you like? Recycle. Related to computers. That's the hint. Recycle bin. Wow. That was a good one. Next group. Good one. We done? So this was only warm up, as I said.
Let's do one more round where we'll put a constraint and we'll put a theme so you have to think a little bit more harder. Yeah? Was this fun or no? Fun to watch other people, <laughs> not to do. <laughs> so does anyone want to pick a theme? Like I said last time we could have a theme like a nursery rhyme and you have to act out a nursery rhyme and people have to guess. Yeah? So act out a nursery rhyme and people have to guess which it is. More points for the people who do something more difficult to guess. But not bad acting. All right, so I'll set the timer again for five minutes. This time you have to act a uh, nursery rhyme and people have to guess. Does everyone remember a nursery rhyme? I'm sure. All right, five minutes again. Or shall we say three minutes this time? Come over. Are you guys ready? Why don't you come over till those guys come here, you can come up. And then you guys can also come in the front. All right, guys, let's, let's see what they have to show. sitting on a wall, one name Peter, one name Paul, fly away Peter, fly away Paul, come back Peter, come back Paul. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so that was good guess. So All right. No one's jumping or suiciding this time. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs>
Oh, that was a serious action movie. <laughs> He's already gone on to the next thing, games team. <laughs> All right, that was a good one. <laughs> All right, which is the next group? Are you guys ready? Why don't you come up here so that we can... Yeah, go ahead. No points for that. <laughs> you, really, you really will do the whole act. <laughs> All right, no problem. Good one. Push-ups. <laughs> this guy seems to be like guessing every single one. All right, that was London Bridge falling down. Who will guess more will be kicked out for tomorrow. <laughs> you get a frisbee. <laughs> All right, next group. Right, so it's. 5.43 now and what we could do now that you've got energized, we could do either birds of feather session, like we could pick up quick topics and we could do more of a focused discussion around those topics or the other thing we could do is lightning talks. If people want to do lightning talks, how many people want to do lightning talks? Are you familiar with the concept of lightning talks? So lightning talks is quick three minute uh, pitch on something that you like from a you know, technology point of view. You come up three minutes, something that you're really passionate. You, you might have a question, you might have uh, insight that you have. You just come up three minutes quick pitch and then you leave, right? It's a good way if you're not doing a lot of presentations, it's a good way to actually get started. Uh, it, it generally helps people to kind of quickly summarize something in three minutes hey, this is what I was working, I saw this, this is an insight I got, which is pretty cool, and then you leave. Or you might explain a problem and put it out to the people saying, you know, I don't know how to solve this, but this is out here. Usually it's fun, three minutes quick presentation on some technical topic, and we could do that. Few people who've not really done a lot of presentations, it could be a good way to get on stage and do something. Yeah? All right, so who wants to go first? Awesome. I'm Bhavet. I'm, uh, I'm coming from Mumbai. Uh, it is a small company I'm working for. This is uh, Intelligent Technologies. So I'm an architect uh, in uh, Ace, uh, Microsoft Technologies. So basically, uh, I'm talking about the concept called a hybrid technologies. So everyone is talking now uh, the hybrid technologies. This is this concept make uh, the uh, mobile application development very very easy. So, so it is a combination of HTML, CSS, and uh, JavaScript uh, development. And uh, the thing is the there is technology called the Cordova, 
So it will take care of all the stuff and uh, make uh, make uh, you the best thing, uh, native application on top of HTML5. So it is very quick. Uh, if you see the Cordova, Cordova is a free, uh, free uh, open source framework. And now Microsoft is support, uh, supporting this. Uh, and uh, uh, Visual Studio 2013, they, provide, they are providing the uh, plugin. Uh, by using that, you can, use, uh, you can create the uh, Cordova applications very easily and very comfortably. So we are uh, mastering that technologies. So that's why we, ask, we are asking uh, Mr. Uh, um, J. Query Foundation team, uh, there, uh, where will be the uh, uh, jQuery mobile uh, uh, 2.0 will be available because we are getting a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, problems in uh, jQuery uh, mobile 1.4 and there are a lot of limitations. So any question regarding this? It's more of a lightning talk, no questions. You just boom and then you leave. Okay. Thank All right, you. cool. Thank you. I'm a student of fourth year pursuing me taking computer science engineering from NIT Raipur. Raipur is in Chhattisgarh. Basically, I'm here to just uh, clear my own personal doubt, which I'm coming through in my recent project. I, I've, been, I've been working on a, uh, webs in a project named Fodinga.in, which is basically nothing for, but uh, for a free home delivery service. Okay, that's it. I'm asking that uh, all we are used to this jQuery. Okay, but uh, jQuery is built on, on the top of JavaScript. That is under, under the hood, everything is doing by the JavaScript. So, uh, so jQuery gives us a lots of functions and simpler functions to use rather than using these long syntaxes of JavaScript. For example, adding any event listener, it, it uh, took a lot of uh, blah, blah things to do. And jQuery provides a very simple way to use Sorry? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. So, so, my problem, <clears throat> my question is that, uh, do we really um, use all the time just jQuery, ignoring the uh, scope of performance? If we ever bother about performance, then should we go for JavaScript, pure JavaScript, long syntax, or rather we just uh, get used to of jQuery and use jQuery always and everywhere? Can anyone? Yes, you. Sure. And why? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, a good bird of feather session. Um, myself is Srinivas. I came from Fidelity Investments. Basically, I'm a Java developer. I don't have much knowledge on uh, jQuery. JavaScript, I have a knowledge. Uh, I have one mad idea. I mean, not only my idea this is. Uh, nowadays, uh, in Google, uh, I search something. Without password, how can we log in into the website? Means user ID also you should not enter. Once you enter the website, you have to log in into the any website. So um, I, I researched in the Google, I found a lot of things, and Google and Motorola also came up with uh, some solutions. Okay, but those are on, uh, I mean, those are one, uh, uh, means password pill they found. So one, that one pill they prepared with the chip. So you have to swallow that one for 30 days. So after that, if you enter the website, directly it will log in into your account. So, but it's, it's a matter of health human body, right? So without that, is there any suggestions? Please give me. So one minute is over, two minutes is there. So anyone gives his, your ideas, means with the eyeball or with the sensor of this, or any ideas other than that one. You understand, right? What? Yeah, two minutes is there, please give the suggestion. His question is, are there any alternatives for signing on into a site without actually signing in, uh, which is kind of using alternative technologies? Yes. 
See how the solution now, what they found is, just enter the website, you logged in. Means because the chip is inside in your body. So other than that, means without affecting pills or like, and one more solution they have given the digital tattoo. Other than that, programmatically, can we do? things will send data at the end of the day so any of these things can help you log in them and that's the automation means you are talking right. about the OTP one means one password sent to the device no I'm not talking of OTP I'm talking of NFC near field communication huh. okay or RFID tags or your GPS okay all these things whatever it is See, it has to work and Or you can use so this is my mad idea for this. Uh, I didn't get the solutions, but why I came up here is because different people have the different mindset. So maybe I can get some answer. So RFC, you can tell. No, it is uh, Amol had come up with IoT device, Arduino devices. They are a thousand odd bucks. You can put it in it. it again, it has sensors. It has Wi-Fi, Raspberry Pi. They all have these uh, devices which you know do Wi-Fi or and wireless signal. Now you just need to hook on to the... Internet. All right, zero minutes left. So we can take this again. If people are interested in this topic, maybe we could have a bird of feather session on this particular topic, right? Okay. Single sign-on or maybe simplifying that whole process. Okay, thank Good you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Hi guys, I'm Divakar Jha from Time Inc. India. Uh, jQuery is for me like earlier uh, when I start working on uh, JavaScript, I used to write document dot get element by ID. Now I can write hashtag, which give, feels like I'm posting something on Twitter. So that's the best thing I can say. It simplified the uh, work of developer. But worst thing is that when you debug it, it <coughs> you may get lost in their uh, minified files, so again, you need to work on uh, the native JavaScript programming. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hi, my name is Sanjay. Uh, I am a solution designer. Uh, and uh, so uh, basically, I have just started learning JavaScript, you know, just a year back. I have been in doing large databases. That was my core technology in Microsoft. And I'm also part of the interaction design team. So while we were developing, a, I mean, converting a solution, you know, I mean, all of you, all, I don't know if you all have seen the old Windows 95 uh, tab interface, the dull gray. So we moved it to web, and we did exactly the same thing. We took the dull gray interface, brought it onto the web. Okay, so, you know, when you click on the tabs and you get an error, you will basically get a pop-up, the modal window, and that's how we uh, presented it. But now when you click on the tab and if you have an error, you do not know which tab has the error, you know. So that was a big challenge for us to try and figure out which is the error? Like, so we got a young guy uh, to explain to us, you know, what is jQuery all about. And so during one of the interaction, he says you can, on runtime, write to the HTML. You can actually create a DOM element. Like, we said, wow. This was like magic to us. You know, for us, it, old timers, HTML was static. I mean, you can give a tag, and that's about it. You can't do anything else. This was like total magic, and from an interaction standpoint, this is what is known as micro-interaction, you know? So what we did was, when, when I clicked on Saved Now, I wrote an error message on the top of the thing that on this tab you have on this field, you have not entered your name. 
you know, that's micro interaction for you. So as a developer, please do be aware that you can never stop learning and you should take into consideration, you know, interactions and the micro interaction which will give joy to the user. Thank you. I'm Nishant and I kind of, I'm really new to the web and stuff. Like I graduated as a mechanical engineer. So um, I got into web design first. So I was like really into Photoshop. I really enjoyed that. And I got a job as a web designer. And um, up until then, I always thought programming was impossible. Like, you know, if I saw a line of code, I'd be like, yeah, I can't understand this. Uh, uh, someone else to deal with it. But what happened to me was like one of my um, workmates came and told me, you know, you should try out HTML, CSS, and JavaScript since you're already into web design. So I started learning that. So HTML and CSS is pretty easy to pick up, right? So I had really fun with that. But then JavaScript got really hard because I couldn't understand the DOM model and all of that. And someone came up to me and said, dude, jQuery. And then after that, I was like, yeah, I'm done. This is like basically space age level stuff for me. So it was really fun. And so um, the company that I work for does a lot of training on that. And I've been having a lot of fun with jQuery. And just want to, it's been really exciting for me being here as well. And we're also involved with the W3C, if you've um, heard of that organization, we're a W3C member, and um, we do a lot of relationships with them, and I just want to say that we have the Global Business Development Manager coming on August 3rd to our premises, and if anyone's in interested in meeting him, you can come to our premises and talk to him from four to six. That's it. Friends, uh, my name is Kailash Vele, and I'm from Mumbai, working for Tantragan India Business Solutions. Uh, I wanted to talk, talk about the approach of learning any technology. And I am a new developer, I mean, so we're working for like last one year on jQuery. I learned jQuery like on trial and error basis and searched on Google how to solve a particular problem. And after that, my approach was like define a problem first, whatever you want to do in your language, and then just write it in the code. So this is my approach. First define the problem, then find the solution. Until and unless you have, don't have any problem defined, you will not get this solution. So I would like to learn what are your approaches. I have seen new developers here. I have seen experienced developers here. So I just want to learn how you proceed to learn a new language or anything. So that's it I wanted to share. If anyone is interested to talk about it or share their approach, they are welcome. Thank you. Awesome. My name is Shivanand and I'm from Time Inc. India. So, uh, just I have only two, three years of experience and I, when I came to the IT industry, I started working into the team and I faced one, one problem like in, if you're working in a team. Like example, like if you're having a, uh, if you're working on like some projects and you are having some environment, like uh, uh, take example, you are working on many if websites and uh, you have Windows machine where you are working and your all team are working on the Windows. So what if like if someone other people is having Linux in their uh, they are using Linux machine and you want to use the sa same they, they want to do the same development there. So here the problems comes like uh, take, uh, like you know like if you are having a dev QA and production environment where the sometimes you might have faced the problem like some things works in a dev but it's not working in QA. So some this kind of things happens. So I, so I, we are also facing the same issue. Then first thing like we f we figured out like. Uh, uh, either we need to use the same platform like Windows, but it's not like if you are having multi-regional or development, then people might choose the different one. So then we came up with the virtual machine. How many people know virtual machine, like how it works and all, right? So there what we have, suppose you are having a Mac machine, Windows machine, whatever it is, be, you are having virtual machine. In that site, in, in that one, you are deploying your uh, site and then you are testing, right? So you are matching the same machine with a dev queue and production. So, one problem is there, like I, I observed that one. Take example, like I'm, wor I'm working on virtual machine and it's, it's, I'm using on some PHP version, stuff like 5.3 PHP version I'm using. But now if someone changes the version, take example my colleague, he want to use some different version, so he changed the version in his virtual machine. Now I don't know, right? So uh, somehow like how, how the virtual machine can be, same virtual machine can be used by everywhere. So again, that time it, it comes with the Docker, like, uh, Docker, Docker. Uh, there we have Docker Hub where you can create a virtual machine and you can push, and other person can pull the virtual machine, and same same environment can be. Uh, everyone can use the same environment. So that is the one. So if anyone know better solution than this one, I would like to uh, hear from you guys. So you can discuss with me in any free time or any time. Okay, thank you right. guys.
containers in general. Container. Talking. Uh, hi guys, I'm Zeeshan, currently not working anyway. Uh, so, uh, what I want to uh, actually talk about here is, uh, I don't know how many people are actually on meetup.com? Okay, how many people actually go to these meetups when they conduct, conduct meetups? Yeah, very few. So, uh, that's what, so essentially the whole idea of building a community about anything, regardless uh, whether jQuery uh, meetup group or a backbone meetup group is, people actually take initiative to attend these meetups. So I run uh, with my couple of friends a backbone meetup group and we have around, you know, uh, sign up of 200 people and what we have seen so far is, you know, people are just motivated to sign up but not to attend meetups. So I'm not saying uh, it's, uh, it's bad or good but, you know, if we don't show this kind of, you know, uh, interest towards uh, attending meetups or, you know, driving the community from India, considering that we have, uh, uh, what do you say, biggest development community uh, in the world. We have so many developers working on open source technologies and everything, and we hardly have 10 to 20 people who actually go up and, you know, attend these meetups. So this gives a really bad impression if we are bringing up some, uh, you know, international speakers to the meetups and they see just 10 people out sitting there, they'll, they get demotivated to come and, you know, talk here. So I insist everybody to take that, you know, initiative to wake up on Saturday morning. It's just like a two hours. Wake up on Saturday morning, just go in there. Uh, you know, attend, there are like a uh, lot of nice things happen there. It's not just about uh, technology. Uh, you get to network with people and understand how bigger applications are built. You know, some really product-based companies are building amazing products with uh, JavaScript and you get to know about this. So my, uh, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, uh, appeal is uh, just that, you know, just, just not about signing up to the meetups. It's also about, you know, attending the meetups as well. That's it. Thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Manjula. Uh, I'm a front-end developer. have worked majorly on AngularJS, Backbone.js. I face a problem, like in single page application, there is a problem in SEO. Like anybody has any solution to it, uh, can share it with me af uh, after this. Uh, SEO is a main problem in a single page app while using AngularJS or say Backbone.js. So if anybody has any suggestion, please share it with me. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of services like prerender.io which provides a service to it and there's a, there's this thing called phantom.js which is like, uh, which can be used but still if anybody has a very good solution to it, please feel free to share it with me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I mean, we have been talking about libraries and backbone and angular and whatever. I mean, actually the browser's API is actually pretty cool. You can use most of it. It's just, so I'm gonna write a small jQuery implementation is like, 10 lines of code, okay? So, as soon as it comes up. It's up. Oops, oh, let me mirror this. So you guys able to see this? Control plus equals to mm. will increase the font, yeah. Is this better? Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah, so let me change the. Yeah, the color. Light black. I think I need to, yeah. This is better? Okay. Now this is a simple um, sort of, uh, uh, you know, file where I've created this jQuery dollar. So you guys, how many guys know about query selector all here? Okay, so uh, so you have the sizzle engine, so which jQuery turns on, which is actually doing that. So you can actually do, I have two buttons here. 
So I can technically do um, dollar, oops, I'm not sure why it's clipped. Okay, right. So I have the dollar object which is mine, so I can say dollar dot of button would actually give me both the buttons, hash one works, and you can even do on three. So you don't really need to use jQuery, I mean, with a little bit of JavaScript, with a little bit of this thing, uh, it's good to know, even if you're using jQuery, it's good to know what un happens underneath. Um, you can use the XML HTTP requests directly. I mean, people are saying, okay, let's remove Ajax from jQuery, things would become easier if you remove them, all this. So in the end, you can directly use query selector all and maybe use uh, smaller libraries like Super Agent, which are very focused on doing one thing and doing one thing well. And you, your code base will look much simpler. So if you have more things to talk about JavaScript or anything tech in particular, so just meet me outside, I'll be happy. Thanks. All right. Uh, could require a much bigger discussion. So do you guys want to kind of do a little bit of birds of feather sessions on those topics now? One I remember was around how do you learn new technologies? How do you pick up new stuff, right? Which I think is pretty interesting. The other one was around uh, ways of signing into a system without actually having to, uh, you know, authenticate yourself. That was another one. Uh, I think SEO was something that, you know, how do you do SEO uh, in general and then particularly on single page apps. Any other topics that we have? No? jQuery over JavaScript, just using uh, performance, basically performance optimization or performance related concerns if you use J J if you use jQuery instead of just using vanilla JavaScript, right? So that's uh, performance is another interesting topic to get. So what I would suggest is, you know, each person who kind of came up with that topic could maybe sit at a table and then everybody else interested could kind of find those people and we could spend maybe the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes, discuss about it, and then you guys can come back uh, and can kind of share a summary, a quick summary of what did you guys come up with, right? So that way we can share the knowledge back with the rest of the people. Yes? All right, so where are the people who came up with the topics? I see one, two, Three and four, all right, perfect. So why don't you guys go find a table so people can come find you? You can announce, you can scream your topics. <laughs> <laughs>